Once upon a time, there was a little girl who loved going on road trips in the sparkly white ambassador. On her way to her grandmother's house, she would snuggle in the back seat with her mother and would plead to be told the story. Her parents would tell her stories about the rice fields they crossed by and how farmers would work under the sun all day for every one of us to be able to eat. They told her stories about the famous landmarks where the annual carnival would take place and stories from their days when they used to save their pocket money to attend the carnival. One year diligently listening to the stories, she would press a small face against the window and looking outside she would wonder, why is that moon following me everywhere? Staring at the moonlit sky, she would thought, maybe even the moon wants to spend the summer vacation with me at my grandma's place. She loved her grandmother. Whenever her grandmother told her stories, she would listen to them very carefully and would imagine them in her own head in her own colors. One night, her grandmother told her the story of the massive earthquake that came in her younger days and how she had to hide under the big bed all night long. In that moment, she made a note. From then on, even she knew that whenever an earthquake comes, hide under the big bed. That is the power of a story. Stories have the power to inspire and empower. We use stories to make sense of the real world, to tie our own experiences together. Terry Prashet says, people think people shape stories. It's actually the other way around. The person I am today is half the stories I have lived and half the ones I have read. I grew up in Assam, the land of the one horn rhino, the terrace tea garden, and a treasure full of folk culture. I got into the habit of reading when I was very young. I came from a family where having a library at home was very important. All the stories I read shaped the person I am today. The stories I read, read made me think about the world in a different way. Even today, when I look into a picture, I'm hungry to look for the story behind it. When I click an image, I try not only to capture the image, but to do full justice to the picture I could see behind it. It's true. The universe is not made of atoms. It's made of tiny, tiny stories. And we are all part of a big story. We have always listened to stories. That's how we remember growing up. We share everything we know through stories. Our doubts, our fears, our hopes. And with the organization I work with, stories are the tools to learn. According to research, storytelling is an abstract way of presenting information that induces creativity of thought. While a story with painted and drawn characters provides a concrete understanding of how the characters and the cultures interact. For over 27,000 years since the first cave paintings were discovered, storytelling has been a very strong and fundamental ways of communication. So let's say, if I have to teach a young child about a new idea or concept, what's the best way? Can I give him a ticket or an invitation to a conference talk and tell him that overnight you'll become an entrepreneur solving everyone's problem? That's hard to sell. But I can tell him a story of a real person, of a real life hero, who gave realistic solutions. Now that's a little convincing. When the protagonist of a story is from the same age group, from the same place, and often faces the same challenges as the reader, the reader feels more connected. He feels empathy and often believes in the same opportunities. So telling a story in a particular way is very important for understanding of the story. Therefore, while creating beautifully designed storybooks for children to learn skills, we decided to focus on strengthening the medium of storytelling. At the place I work in, I am allowed to have the freedom to believe in the world of stories. Sometimes I am inside a story, and sometimes I am out there writing one. At going to school, we believe in the power of storytelling. We create design-driven stories that teach 21st century entrepreneurial and employability skills. We are teaching the children of India to identify problems, to take lead, and solve their own community's biggest problems. Our program runs in 1,300 secondary schools, and we are crossing over, impacting 150,000 kids in grade 9 every week. We started in Bihar, the state with the lowest literacy rate in India. And we knew if we, we could make this work out there, we could work anywhere else. And so we did. 
Today we are telling stories across Bihar, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. With 1.2 billion people in our country, we have the largest number of young people in the world. But with the increasing population and unemployment crisis, only problems are increasing, but very few solutions have been created, especially at the grassroots level. The future working generation who are currently in school need to learn market relevant skills. It is time we make education relevant to employment. At the same time, the dropout rates in our schools, they are alarming. In just a year, they have increased from 2.7% to 3.1%, and that's sad. Many villages do not have schools. While some have primary schools, children still have to travel long distances to pursue secondary education. Where there are schools, the roads are broken. Where there is a cycle given to the child by the government, it is both uncomfortable and, and unappealing to travel long distance under the harsh temperatures to pursue education, which invariably leads them to dropping out of school. Some children drop out of school and help their parents earn bread, while others would just sit idle at home. For girls, the problems are even worse. There is no security, there are no bathrooms in the schools, and there's always extra household work. There are obstacles and they keep emerging. But still, millions of children are every day filling up classrooms. Our job is to make sure they keep coming. So how do we do that? How do we equip these young children with the right set of skills so that they can be helped to become a hero, a leader for others, and then given an opportunity to become successful? We can empower them with something as simple as sharing a well-written, well-told story. At going to school, we work with children with a special focus on girls. We give them storybooks that each focuses on a specific skill, <coughs> teaching them how to do research work, how to spot opportunities, how to build strong social connections, how to do negotiation, and many more others. These storybooks are then trained to be taught to government school teachers who share them in an exciting and engaging way of storytelling. We tell them, if you are telling a story, be engaging. Tell a story, don't read it out. When children read this story, they know they are listening to a hero, a hero's version of how they made it possible. When we create these stories, we create one for every child so that they can own the storybook, read it whenever they want to, and learn a skill, while, and all this while they're still at school. We give them stories about real life heroes. We all have stories. You are a hero, I am a hero. We all know people who are heroes in our lives. It's only the stories that go untold. So we give them real life hero stories that are about real people who identified a problem and give realistic solutions. When they read about Archana, who's a real life entrepreneur, who lives in Sirsi, they were thrilled. Sirsi is a very small village in Karnataka. Archana, as an entrepreneur, identified the problem of plastic waste, and she identified our opportunity. The local resource of areca leaf was in abundance. So we made a story on her, One World, Many Leaves, a graphic novel based on Archana, who as an entrepreneur identified a problem, replaced it by starting a leaf plate business, and in today's date employs more than 85 women in her village. We are giving them real stories. When girls in secondary schools read these stories, they come as a new option, a new option for ideas, support, and real people who they can see as their role models. These children are reading about people who are just like them, facing the same problems and challenges, and yet are taking risks. They are using their skills and resources around them to solve their community's biggest problems. I can't be everywhere. I can't go to 1,300 secondary schools or meet and inspire over 50,000 girls every day. But I know a story can. We can make a difference with a story. We are teaching young people to become entrepreneurs. Small enterprises, but significant enterprises that starts with learning skills at school. Let's face it, we all need heroes, we all need to be told what we can do good in our lives, we all need to be shown that we can do better. A story has the power to do that. 
A story makes us believe in the impossible. At going to school, we are creating stories that teach them entrepreneurial skills. They learn how to negotiate. They learn how, if they want to start an enterprise, which skills will they need? Do they need to be innovative? Do, do they need to have a sense of wonder? They do. That's how you sell your product. What your USP should be? How should you communicate? How should you market your product? And for each storybook, we design a game. They play the wheel of connections to show their primary and social connections. They play a marketing game to show how their marketing strategy is better than the other. And then we create a skill section project that they complete in their community. We ask them to create a newspaper on entrepreneurs or make a cash flow on the viability of solar light. Tomorrow when children will have these skills, they will not need me. They will pass on these stories on their own. And they will be equipped with the skills to become entrepreneurs who will be working towards bringing the change. But is it that easy? Can I tell a story and make a difference in the world? In India, it is a little tough. In India, we have no words for an entrepreneur. On one hand, there's a businessman who makes money. And on the other hand, a social worker who does good. I like to believe at this time we bring on the concept of a social entrepreneur who takes on big problems and solves it through an enterprise. And because it's an enterprise, it's sustainable. It lives beyond them. So what is the power of a story? How do we convince a child by just sharing a story? Let me tell you a short story now. When 10-year-old Bijli found out that her best friend Pankhuri was not allowed to go to the carnival in the nearby village, she was very upset. She made sure if the carnival couldn't come to her village and she would not let it happen, she will make sure she uses all her skills to convince the carnival manager. But the stern manager said, I will need proof that at least 200 people will come to the village. So how would she do that? A distraught Bijli started thinking. She does not know 200 people. Her grandmother told her, maybe you do. All you need to figure out is who you know through whom. And there it was, the solution lied in front of her. She used all her skills and convinced all the people she knew to sign her petition and in her journey made many new friends. She understood that there is the power of social connections. There are some people you are born knowing and there are some that you can meet. The more people you know, it, the easier your work becomes. But it's even better if you make genuine friends along the way. In Sivan, a group of young girls read this story and thought it was time they should use their social connections. The road to their school was broken, which made it very difficult for them to ride their cycles and reach school on time. They made a social connections map and showed how they can use their connections to reach the village head and talk about this problem. When the teacher saw the project, they were, he was very happy. He said, finally, someone is using the stories. When the village head saw the project, he was embarrassed, shocked, and couldn't believe a group of young people were telling him to do something he should have already done. But yet the courage and the skills of the girls worked. The road was soon fixed, and even the drains were clean as an additional offer. The girls were very happy and excited about their first victory, and when I went there to visit them, they all shared the story in unison. I feel very proud when I see the power of a single story impact the lives of so many at the same time. 13-year-old Sonam from Gaya wants to become a doctor. She says she wants to open a clinic so that she can treat people on time. Young girls in Bihar understand the importance of being on time. 15-year-old Alisha hones her leadership skills as she says, I want to bring in a change. I want to make this world a better place for girls. She wants to join the police services. If you have a lesson to teach or a new thing to say, what is the most innovative and easy way to teach it? Share a story. I grew up surrounded by stories and it shaped the way I see my life today. I believe the stories I am sharing with thousands of children will inspire them and set their life with the right skills for their entire life. And this will happen now at the right time, at the right place, while they are still at school. We need to tell them that there are better opportunities and you are capable of creating these opportunities for yourself. So, if you have a lesson to teach, share a story 
And just like me, I assure you, they will always remember that when an earthquake comes, always hide under the big bed. And in Doctor Who's words, we are all stories in the end. You will remember me as a story in your head. Just make it a good one. Thank you. <laughs>